Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Aho here with KissAnalog.com. Okay, in a previous video, I reviewed these Xantrex power supplies I got. I got two of them, and I just got, uh, I was getting by one for the channel, the low noise power supplies, and I'm getting two. Uh, one thing I didn't like about them is they just didn't have a, a load on off button, and I like that. Um, on the Kai Wheats, they don't have that either. Think about adding one to that too, but here, let me show you another way to do it. Uh, on power supplies that have programmable input ports where you can control them remotely, these Atrix power supplies, they have a port on the back where you can apply 5 volt signal and it'll turn off the output, turn it off or turn it on. So let's see how that works. What we'll want to do is see when we apply the voltage, how long it takes to turn off the output, and yeah, and then when we remove the signal. How long it takes for this, uh, the output of the Xantrex to pop back up. So let's go ahead and uh, let me show you in the manual how you can do it real quick. And then we'll come over to the bench and I'll show you the bench. Alright guys, so here is section 1 features and specs. And the power supply that I have is this one right here, 60-9. So it's up 60 volts, 9 amps at the same time. The XPD series. Not very nice power supply. Here's the display. Okay. Uh, let's come down and take a look at it. I'll let you read that if you like. All the inputs. And this is a chassis connection tied to your safety earth ground. And here are the rear back panels, depending on which model you have. And you'll notice that the one I have has this one right here with this connector. Okay, for the output power and uh, and this connector right here J2 J210 is the connector that we'll be uh, using for programming this is a sense connector and this is the output connector and obviously the IEC input connector all right and here's the J210 connector so pin one if you notice sometimes the numbering staggers sometimes it does this it starts from one corner goes straight out and then it comes back down and goes up again so that's kind of a zigzag type uh, numbering system uh, they're all different sometimes they go around a lot of times they zigzag one two three four so you, you want to look at the pin out but once we understand where pin one is then let's go down here Okay, now right here, this is the description of all the pins. And the ones we care about is, it says TTL, so that's, you know, logic signals, right? And it's S-D, so shutdown signal. And the return is on pin 1. And the uh, plus is pin 2. Now we have a little note, this little 1 right here. So let's go down and look at the note. Well, note. One is TTL shutdown circuit is isolated 500 volts. So there's that. Now here's some cautions about using the connections. They're talking about that they're ice. They are isolated from ground, so they're they have their own return path. And another thing we like to look at is electrical specs. So again, we're looking at 60-9. So this column right here to the right, you can see the load regulation line regulation, the output noise, 125 millivolts, output ripple is 10 millivolts. So really, yeah, low noise, really quiet, good ripple specs. Okay, here's some additional specs. Uh, rise and fall time is 50 milliseconds. Uh, no load, 400 milliseconds, because it has discharge output capacitance longer. Transient response, one millisecond. And then time delay for power to be stable is three seconds. That's when you first power up. Okay, some additional things. Uh, over voltage uh, protection control and switching frequency. I think 125 or 250 k at the output ripple because it's probably interlaced. So there's two of them interleaved or whatever. So uh, there's that. Now, here's the thing that we want to see. Remote programming. So 5 to 15 volt for TT or TTL compatible, so 5 volts um, input impedance, 2K in series with one diode drop. 
So this is an optical coupler input, I'm sure. And so we're gonna put a 2K resistor in series with our voltage so that it'll drop the, the voltage and, and limit how much current goes to the diode. Okay, and that's how we're gonna do it. All right, so just a little discussion about the setup. I'm gonna use a buck converter to apply 20 volts input and it'll put five volts out, okay? I showed this buck converter in a previous video and I want to show how the Xantrex power supply can now be programmed to turn on and off your power so you can do some, you know, cycle testing. I'm going to use a Bryman at the um, output. It's uh, running over here to the output. Okay, and it's kind of funny because I've got the uh, amp probe over here. I've got the amp probe over here and it's going to be looking at the 5 volt logic in the back. I'll also be using the scope probe right here at the input to monitor the 20 volts of the input that we're going to apply. And then we'll be using a differential probe here to monitor the output. And that's these probes. This is to the Bryman. So that'll come to the MixSig uh, DP1007 differential probe. And then I'll, we'll also use the Pintech differential probe to monitor the logic signal that I'm programming uh, at 5 volts on off to toggle the output okay so let's see how that works all right so the back end of the power supply hey made in USA this is the connector for power this is connected for sense and this is a program connector and pins 1 and 2 are right down here I've got this orange wire and pin 1 that's my return and pin 2 has this 2.2k resistor okay so then this connector will go to my power supply and it also goes to this amp probe meter that we'll use to monitor the voltage, okay? Alright, so as you can see we have 20 volts going into the buck converter, 0.18 amps. The output's 5 volts from the BM786 and we have 0 volts at the logic signal at the back of the power supply. So let's go ahead and program that, that 5 volts. And the output drops and that. Now let's look it on the oscilloscope, see what that looks like. All right, guys, let's go through the setup. Channel one is gonna be the logic signal. It's referenced right here and it's one volt per division. So we should see it go one, two, three, four, five. Should see it jump up five volts. When it does that, the input voltage, which is channel three, that's the purple one. It's a five volts per division right now. So we got five, 10, 15, 20 volts at the input. We'll see the input drop and we'll see the output drop. So, and the output is channel two, the blue one, and it's one volt per division. It starts right here, it's one, two, three, four, five. Okay? Now, as far as triggers go, my trigger's on this side of the screen and right here. When we see the input voltage drop below that level, right here, it's going to trigger and that's the rising edge. So, we should see it fall and then rise if I can, if I can. Uh, get the logic signal plugged in and plugged out with the right timing. <laughs> so let's give it a try. All right, here we go. All right, that doesn't look too bad. It's a little bit shaky here. See the yellow one? I kind of, you know, I'm just putting a uh, toggle into the front of the power supply. So, all right, so that's a pretty good capture. If I used a function generator or something like this, you know, I could uh, control that signal to turn on and off the power supply with a nice square wave. So I won't get this little choppy stuff. See when I zoom in on this. Zoom in over on the input. So there's my 5 volt logic to tell the power supply to turn off. And the purple one is the 20 volts turning off. So here let's zoom in just a little tighter. Alright, so if I put this cursor, here let me make them yellow. If I put that right where the logic signal, I think, went up, okay, and then put this one right where the 20 volts started to turn off, right about there. It took about 1.9 milliseconds, probably say 2 milliseconds, to uh, control the output of the power supply, the Xantrex, to turn off. And then as far as... When the output of the Xantrex turned off, which is the input to the buck converter, then the output of the buck converter started to turn off too. And that's a function of just the load and, and the converter. But 
yeah so there's it takes about two milliseconds for the signal to uh, to tell the output to turn of the Xantrex to turn off it looks like so let's move this over to the other side and we're gonna have to open this up so we can see everything that happened there we go okay take one of these guys slide over here that's where the logic signal dropped out and then it allowed the 20 volts to start to turn on right about there which is about 99 milliseconds 99.6 let's say it's probably say 100 milliseconds so two milliseconds to turn off 100 milliseconds for it to allow it to turn back on and then as it came on you can see how the output ramped up to 20 volts so let's see what that looks like yeah the thing about these touch displays you take some practice hitting what you want to move okay so took about 87.6 milliseconds to ramp up to uh, 20 volts and then after that you can see the buck converter turned on a little bit later and popped up and put its 5 volts out and that that delay is just a function of the converter alright guys so that's pretty cool that you can control these you know more expensive power supplies with these programmable ports right uh, yeah these are low noise power supplies I like them for that um, I've got another power supply I just got and I'm just getting a lot of power supplies and you know honestly uh, filming videos on these they they turn on the fan they're not super loud but they're just loud enough that uh, it's a little bit annoying if you notice in the last video where I used one of these guys so I think I might just sell those uh, get my money back and uh, use that for something else but yeah it's a good try but it is neat that you can control them and turn them on and off and that that's a pretty cool thing so yeah let me know what you guys think thumbs up the video if you liked it if it's helpful you see how easy it is to to you know if you have a power supply that has programmable ports how you can do that and uh appreciate you watching and two thumbs up to my patrons really appreciate you guys you become a patron uh down below there's a link uh as little as a dollar a month <laughs> but anyway i have links for uh, the kai wheat stuff and for a bunch of different multimeters and a bunch of that stuff it doesn't cost you anything extra and it does uh, help support the channel but a free way to support it is to give the old thumbs up on the video uh, when you like the videos it does help the youtube analytics so appreciate that too thanks a lot guys we'll see you next time